Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And Skyrim's graphical modding scene is unquestionably the largest in gaming. The Elder Scrolls V may be nearing her 8th birthday, but that hasn't stopped its talented community of mod authors from making it look better than many modern releases. With the metaphorical onslaught of 8K retextures, parallax mapped models, and complete overhauls to her lighting engine releasing every year, it feels like Skyrim's mod authors are consistently finding new boundaries to push in their never-ending quest to achieve a game that looks better than reality. But, what if instead of looking forward, instead of entertaining our obsession with photorealism, we looked backward? What if instead, we made a game that looked simpler than the one that released in 2011? How would it look? How would it run? What mods would complement it and what new opportunities would be opened up? Well, dear viewer, that's a question we'll be trying to answer in today's video. We're going to be overhauling Skyrim to not only make it look and feel like an older game than it actually is, but also do our best to still keep it from appearing like a total eyesore, and perhaps make it into something I wouldn't mind playing through. Anyway, with our mission set, let's dive right into this ambiguous project to reimagine Skyrim as something not so photorealistic. Now, prior to playing around with the big changes, specifically lighting and textures, I have a couple small recommendations. You can choose to skip these no problem, they're not totally essential to what we're trying to do, but these are mods I feel will really complement the experience. The first is Paper World Map, or PWM for SSE, by Warburg. This is pretty self-explanatory. It's a mod that's going to replace our real-time, three-dimensional world map with a hand-drawn 2D one. This looks really good on its own, but fits especially well with the aesthetic we're going to end up creating. Additionally, I like to pair it with pastel map markers, which is just going to color in all the icons across the atlas, to make it look even better in my opinion. The other mod I recommend downloading early is Sovngarde Font Replacer by Mist Valkyrie, specifically the Light Edition preset. This mod simply swaps out Skyrim's boring, weird generic font with something more fantasy appropriate. Like pastel map markers, it's actually a mod I use almost all the time, and I'm such a fan of the font, I've even integrated it in a lot of videos. But installing this is really going to help make you feel like you're playing a game with a totally different artistic style. So now that we've gotten that stuff out of the way, to really get started, we're first going to want to disable pretty much every graphical mod we've ever installed. Visual mods so detailed they turn my PC into a device capable of baking muffins have no place in this endeavor. Once that's done, it's time for what is unequivocally the most important part of what we're doing today. Retextures. We're looking for a mod, or mods, that essentially just lower the resolution of as much of the game's textures as humanly possible. And lucky for us, there's two texture packs currently on the Nexus that do about 90% of the work in this department for us. They're both retexturing the same objects and aren't compatible with one another. I'll touch upon both of them so you can choose whichever you prefer. Terrible Textures for Weak Computers by Gutless Vader is the first. All it does is simply take the game's old texture files and scale them down to be incredibly tiny. There's no complex repainting or redesigning. The author seems to have just opened up the files, scaled them down, and uploaded the mod. If you're dead set on just trying to make this game look as potato-ish as possible, this is the one I would probably recommend for you. There's no complex effects, no color corrections, or polishing. Gutless Vader makes it clear in the title and the mod description that his purpose for creating this project was to give players on weaker PCs the opportunity to run Skyrim, or see some major framerate boosts. And no matter whether you choose Terrible Textures or the next mod I'm gonna show, performance is one department you are almost certainly going to see the game improve in. But more on that later. Now, the other mod you can choose for this purpose, and the one that I actually personally prefer, is the Artistic Skyrim Overhaul, Pixar Edition, by the ASO team. ASO Pixar starts off by doing the same thing as Terrible Textures did, that is to say, lowering the resolution of all of the game's texture files. But then the team went back and sort of touched things up, if you will. They made certain textures brighter and intensified their colors to give the game an all-around more vibrant feel, 
while at the same time it changed the very meshes, that is to say models, of a few objects and characters they felt didn't look right. For example, the team created entire new signs and paintings to decorate storefronts, and they redid road markers after deciding the low-res textures didn't mesh well with the game's text. Doors, roads, and certain structures have even been completely repainted, but still boast smaller file sizes than their original. Clouds in the sky now support a more hand-drawn look. It's really cool. Overall, ASO Pixar creates a visual aesthetic that's more colorful, consistent, and cohesive than terrible textures. And indeed, feels like a Pixar cartoon, or something we'd see out of RuneScape. I should mention that while the artistic Skyrim overhaul team began with this Pixar visual pack, they've since expanded and released others, such as an oil-themed visual pack and a paint one, that are also worth checking out. Alright, so now, at least as far as retextures go, we're done. ASO and or just terrible textures is all you're really going to need. However, while these mods provide an insanely unique aesthetic in their own right, I found myself pretty unhappy with how Skyrim's vanilla lighting engine interacted with all these new visuals. Lighting is probably the most underrated element of graphical design there is. It makes such a massive difference, yet is almost always overshadowed by textures when people are talking about visuals. So this is one element I feel we need to address. After all, when Bethesda was lighting the game, they were aiming for a much different art style than the one we are. And as a result, the game's vanilla light can blend quite poorly with these mods. Therefore, we're gonna do what we can to fix this. To begin this process, I'd like to start with the weather mod Natural and Atmospheric Tamriel, or NAT, by L00. So this is another one of those mods that you really wouldn't expect to see in a video like this. Natural and Atmospheric Tamriel was designed specifically to make the game look more realistic. And on top of that, it's a weather mod. What does it have to do with lighting? Well, while NAT certainly wasn't created for the type of Skyrim we have in mind, as one game developer may put it, it just works. You see, being a weather mod, it doesn't just add in a whole bunch of new weather types to the game and replace the old ones. It also introduces a variety of new lighting patterns and mechanics to go along with those new weather types. And these lighting techniques go together really well with the ASO, in my opinion. They're going to brighten up the world considerably. Arguably a bit too bright, but don't worry, there's an ENB we're going to use to fix that. And the hue of all of this new light is a more light yellow slash whitish tint that meshes better than the darker blues and grays vanilla exposes us to. With our weather mod out of the way, it's time for an ENB. ENBs don't really change the colors of or the light sources themselves. Instead, they overhaul Skyrim's post-processing engine to change how the game ultimately ends up displaying all of that light on our systems, as well as often add in additional effects like depth of field or those cinematic black bars you see so often. They're a staple of pretty much any PC load order, and this is not the exception. The Artistic Skyrim Overhaul's mod authors specifically recommend the Tetrachromatic ENB by Slothability, claiming that it complements their work best. But I'm going to go ahead and actually recommend something else. Maybe it's just because we're using a corresponding weather mod, but Photorealistic Tamriel with the Natural and Atmospheric Tamriel preset is my go-to. In all honesty, either looks great. However, photorealistic Tamriel, I feel, adds in a layer of contrast to the Elder Scrolls V's color grade that meshes exceptionally well with ASO's vibrant textures and NAT's bright lights. Furthermore, another huge reason to choose this ENB is how it deals with subsurface scattering. In this context, that's basically just a fancy way of saying that this ENB makes the skin of characters interact with light much better. And while I've always been somewhat critical of how I felt PRT sometimes overdid it, making characters look way too orange or yellow in certain situations, it actually goes together really well with all the other mods in this video. It suits the style. As a whole, I think Photorealistic Tamriel is a great ENB in its own right. But it also fits our cause when we're trying to make Tamriel not so photorealistic as well. 
And with the ENB and lighting out of the way, there you have it. A Skyrim reimagined as something that could be confused with RuneScape or one of those knockoff Disney productions. I'm pretty happy with the look we're left with. Somewhat also reminded of the graphics seen in Sea of Thieves, but maybe that's just me. No matter, I think despite some major texture simplification, the game looks gorgeous, just in a different kind of way. I also suspect many will be very satisfied with what this combination is going to do to our performance. Even though PRT and Natural and Atmospheric Tamriel are often considered to be on the more performance-taxing side of the modding spectrum, the sheer benefit of simplifying all of these textures is going to far outweigh any hiccups you might otherwise incur. Anyway, thanks for stopping by, everybody. What do you think of this new coat of paint we've slapped on Skyrim? And what ways should we overhaul the game next? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Again, thanks for stopping by, and hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.